Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2017 President's Convocation at Lipscomb University. Thank you for joining us today as we begin 127 years of this learning community. Just as a reminder to the students and to the faculty, if you have a class at 1155 with the university, please note that classes will begin 15 minutes after convocation concludes. We will begin today with a traditional academic procession that dates back to the 12th and 13th centuries when universities were first taking form. This processional reflects the formality of our roots in church and also reflects our gathering as a community from around the world. Together, today, we celebrate beginning another year of learning, of service, and of community. Leading our procession today and carrying the Lipscomb Mace is Harriet Shivers, Officer of the Board of Trustees, retiring after 12 years of faithful service. The mace is a ceremonial symbol of authority. The Lipscomb University mace was carved from wood harvested from a fallen elm tree that grew in a fence row on David Lipscomb's original farm. One in a line of trees that to this day run through Bison Square at Lipscomb University. And now, students, will you join me in welcoming representatives of the faculty of Lipscomb University and Lipscomb, Univer and Lipscomb Academy entering the arena as we begin the Parade of Flags. The 113 flags displayed today represent 67 nations and 46 states of the students of the Academy and Lipscomb University. As you hear your country's flag call, please applaud and let us know you're proud of your country. Australia, Austria, Azerbaijan, the Bahamas, Bangladesh, Belize, Bolivia, Brazil, Burkina Faso, Cambodia, Cameroon, Canada, Cape Verde, Cayman Islands, Chad, China, Choctaw Nation, Colombia, Croatia, Egypt, El Salvador, Ethiopia, France, Germany, Guatemala, Guyana, Honduras, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Italy, Jamaica, Japan, Kenya, Malaysia, Mauritius, Mexico, 
Moldova, Myanmar, Netherlands, New Zealand, Nicaragua, Nigeria, Pakistan, Peru, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, Russia, Rwanda, Sabah, Saudi Arabia, Scotland, Singapore, South Africa, South Korea, Spain, Sudan, Sweden, the Ukraine, United Kingdom, the United States of America. Uzbekistan, Venezuela, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe. And now entering the arena next will be representatives of the A.M. Burton Society and the Legacy Society. The A.M. Burton Society is comprised of university supporters who were responsible for nearly two and a half million dollars in scholarships that you were receiving this year. Collectively, Burton Society members have also committed nearly 90 million dollars to the future of this university. The Legacy Society is comprised of individuals who have given more than $100,000 to the university during their lifetimes. Collectively, current members of the Legacy Society have invested more than $111 million in scholarships, facilities, and faculty because they have faith in your future. All told, nearly 10,000 individuals will invest in you by giving to Lipscomb University this year. Please welcome the A.M. Burton Society and the Legacy Society. Will you join me in welcoming representatives of the Lipscomb University Board of Trustees, the senior leadership team, and the academic leadership team? Now entering the arena, today's program participants.
ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 17th president of Lipscomb University, Dr. L. Randolph Lowry, along with presidential spouse and Professor Rhonda Lowry. Good, uh, good morning, and uh, let's, let's begin by thanking the Nashville Pipe and Drum and their uh, celebratory music. You may be seated. We have what we think will be an inspiring and educational moment in our community today, and we welcome you to it. We will begin in just a moment by an opening prayer led by the student government president of Lipscomb Academy, Ryan Lusk. That will be followed by remarks from David Scobie, who is the chairman of our board of trustees. Most of us don't interact with the board every single day or every single week, but behind this institution and its success are a group of 30, 35 people that have given years of their time, millions of dollars of their money, and they hold the soul of the institution and its future in their hands. David Scobie has been the chairman of that board for the last six years. He will complete that service in November, and we are pleased to have him open our convocation today. Would you please join us? Please bow with me. Dear God, we come to you today, and we thank you. We get to gather here today not only because we're part of Lipscomb, but because we're part of your kingdom. Lord, I pray specifically right now for every person in this room to experience you in a new way this coming school year. Help us truly listen to what you have to say. And we love you, and we know that your will be done above all else. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. It is great to be with you. I love the energy in the room. It's the start of another academic year. And this is the first gathering in this academic year of the whole Lipscomb community. What does it mean to be part of the Lipscomb community? Well, I'd ask you to pause for just a minute and look around in this room. Look around and see what you see. When I look around, I see a collection of people of different ages different ethnic backgrounds, different religious traditions, different sexes, different socioeconomic backgrounds, different sizes and shapes. You may have noticed Randy and I have to adjust the microphone differently. Um, we're from different cities, different states, different countries as represented by the flags and, and the people of those countries in the room. So how do we take all of these differences and make them into something powerful, something special, something holy that honors God? The early church was an amalgam of differences. Men and women, Jews and Gentiles, slaves and free. But in Galatians 3 we read, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one. You are all one in Christ Jesus. In other words, Christians are to discard all of the feelings they might have of superiority. 
Jews should no longer consider themselves to be superior to Gentiles. Free people should no longer consider themselves to be superior to slaves. And men should not consider themselves superior to women. A sense of superiority is at the root of racism, hate, and bigotry. And it has no place in our community. The only name among us, yes, the only name among us worthy of the title superior is God and God alone. So what was the characteristic that was to set a Christian community and our community apart from the rest of the world? We see plenty of bad examples in the world around us, but what is that characteristic that God knew would set us apart? What is God looking for in us as a community? What behaviors are we to model for the world to see? In the Gospel of John, chapter 13, we read, A new commandment I give to you, love one another. As I have loved you, so also you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And in 1 John 4, 20, we read, If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. So what can we be? What will we be? What must we be? A community that models love for each other. A community that does that to model for the world the difference God makes when we are bound together by love. A community that doesn't allow our differences to divide us with the seeds of discord, but rather a community that loves in ways that only God's people can love. The Lipscomb community, your community, Our community is a community of love for each other, a community of love that I'm honored to be a part of. All praise and glory to God for the uniqueness of the Lipscomb community. This is holy ground, we're standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present and where he is, is holy. This is holy Standing on holy ground, for the Lord is present, and where he is, is holy. You are holy, God, a perfect and holy. Hearts made clean by 
Jesus' blood, you are holy God, a perfect and holy God. We will come before you with hearts made clean by Jesus' blood. standing on a holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. So let us On a holy ground, and we are standing on a holy ground, for I know that there are angels all around. So let us praise Jesus now. We are standing in his presence. We are standing in his presence. And we are standing. I would tell you to be seated, but I think you sound better standing. <laughs> so let's sing this next song together. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to end. Your name is great, and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, 
failing. The end is near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forever. Sing it like you mean it. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I'll worship his holy name. Sing like never One more time. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. I'll worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. a blessing it is to be a part of this community. Praise the Lord. I have a prayer to read today that um, Paul prayed for the Ephesians and I pray daily for my children and my grandchildren and I want to pray this prayer over you today too. <clears throat> and this is from the message. <clears throat> I ask God to strengthen you by his spirit. Not a brute strength but a glorious inner strength, that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. And I ask him that with both feet planted on love, you'll be able to take in with all the followers of Jesus the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth. Test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the height. Live full lives, full in the fullness of God. God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Glory to God in the church. Glory to God in the Messiah in Jesus. Glory to all the generations. Glory through all the millennial. Thank you, Lipscomb, for blessing my life. <laughs> Will you stand and join us in the alma mater? Children's song, praise. 
Will you join me in prayer again? Father God, holy, holy, holy is your name. We ask that you will completely fill this place and let this, let this be a place of your worship. Father, we ask that you'll be the leaders of Lipscomb, but also with the leaders of our world. Please give them vision for the future, but also awareness of the present. Father, our hearts go out right now to the people in Texas that have been affected by the flood. We ask that you will protect them that you will comfort them, um, and you'll bring them peace. Father, be with all of us and keep us. Give us all wisdom and let us be a light into our world. Help us to be unified as a university and as a country and as a world in you. Let us be the body of Christ. Amen. I'm delighted to be here with you this morning to offer the academic charge for the university. And this is indeed going to be a great year, the best year that we've seen in Lipscomb thus far because of all of us here, because of the Lipscomb community. You all have seeds of greatness inside of you. We all have that. We have opportunities to succeed, and we want to utilize those opportunities that are right at our grasp at this point. And that doesn't matter if you're brand new. You may be still trying to find Starbucks. Or you may have been here for decades, but we all have something to offer, something to give to this university. So in the charge this morning for faculty, we want to instill in students a sense of curiosity and a motivation to succeed. For students, I want you to dig deep to find that success within you, to find those seeds of greatness and to let them grow. And for the Lipscomb community in general, we want to enhance Christian faith and practice the academic excellence. And we view this all through the lens of the Lipscomb mission, which is to integrate Christian faith and practice with academic excellence. So think of this, as you will, as a marriage of all our programs across this fine university to create the marriage with a liberal arts university to create a whole. So I want to leave you today with three keys of success. And these are things that are right at your fingertips, things that you can utilize now. One of those you're going to get to, to uh, work with us today on. The first one's going to be to deepen your faith. So I encourage you to walk, um, to develop a closer walk with God, to strengthen your prayer life, because in Him you'll know you'll always be with Him, you'll never be alone. One of my mom's favorite uh, chapters in the Bible was Psalms 91, and in that he tells us he'll give his angels charge over us, to watch over us and protect us in all that we do. So use this opportunity to deepen your faith. Secondly, this is something that we're all going to get to work on together right now. I want everyone to hold your shoulders back and practice good posture. So let's all sit up straight and hold our shoulders back. You've already increased your lung capacity. You've already brought more oxygen to your brain. So uh, that's going to do you well in school. And that, look at this, these National Honor Societies, here we come because we're holding our shoulders back. There's also a great TED talk on that as well too, so I would encourage you to look at that. And then third, I want you to try difficult things. So don't stay within your comfort zone. Don't do only things that come easily to you because I can promise you the significant return on investment of doing difficult things will be that you'll be recognized as a leader. You'll be the go-to person. You'll be recognized as someone who's confident and it'll instill confidence in yourself. So to recap, these three keys to, to success, let's deepen our faith. Let's remember to keep good posture and also to try difficult things. This is indeed going to be a great year. I wish you God's sweetest blessings in the journey. Thank you, Professor, and welcome again to all of you. This is a great day. Chairman Scobie began by talking about community, and we extend that theme not only through this celebration, but also through uh, our programs, both at the academy and the university this year. We are, are always blessed 
We are blessed in just a, a number of profound ways. But this moment in the year, we're blessed with a realization that uh, more than 800 new students have come from around the world to join this community. If you're a new student, would you please stand and let us welcome you to Lipscomb. And we also welcome each year faculty who have chosen this institution, chosen your lives to influence, chosen this as a place to develop as scholars. Uh, we have uh, 18 or 20 on the college side and uh, 10 or 12 on the academy side. If you're a new faculty member this year, would you stand and allow us to welcome you to this faculty community? We are privileged to, this year, open a number of new facilities. Uh, we will look at uh, the new athletic facilities in the academy as the first football game takes place shortly. A number of you are living in Bison Hall, which a year ago had not been started and now is uh, the largest investment we've ever made, the largest residence hall in terms of its cost, and we hope a place that will create a culture that will set the stage uh, for this campus. We also have done something else, and I don't ever get enough credit here. Uh, I don't get enough credit because I can't ever get enough done. But it might be interesting for you to know that since this time a year ago, we've actually constructed 250 parking spaces on this campus. <clears throat> Again, I know that's not enough, uh, but we're making progress and uh, we are thinking of you as we listen carefully to you. Uh, since we were together, we've received new recognition and that's a blessing as well. Uh, I think it's a great moment as Carnegie looked out and looked at this university and said, no longer will we classify you as a regional comprehensive university. You're gonna leave the group that includes Belmont and Harding and Freed and Elon and a host of really good schools because Lipscomb University will be elevated to the classification of a national university. <laughs> and when they elevated us, as I've said several times, there's a category of 300 schools we came in 124 spaces ahead of schools that had already been on that list. And that's a tribute to our faculty, it's a tribute to the administration, it's a tribute to the vision of the board, and it's a tribute to the students who make this school so successful. And then in the next category, well, we're blessed by people. And that list could go on and on, but today I want to pause just because I believe it's timely to recognize two people who have done so much for this institution during especially the last six years, our chairman, David Scobie, and his spouse, Debbie Scobie. <laughs> David is the former president of AT&T. Uh, they together are parents of a Lipscomb alum. Uh, they're the in-laws of one of our religion faculty members, but they've been woven into the life of this campus for a long, long time, deeply committed to what it means in the lives of students. They're committed to their family, to their church, to this institution. And as I think back over especially the last six years, because the president has a, a unique relationship with the chairman. We also say and often say that the number one job of the Board of Trustees is to hire and fire the president. I'm pleased that only half of that has been accomplished thus far in this administration, but uh, there is a relationship because together we do shoulder the burden and seek to walk forward with an institution. I cannot tell you how many trips they have made from Atlanta, Georgia to Nashville how many trips they've made to be at an event where you were performing uh, or you were playing uh, or in some way it was significant in the life of the community. I cannot possibly measure the number of hours they have spent in meetings, the wisdom that they have brought in special moments when we needed it, 
the constant encouragement that they have been, or even the accomplishments during their term. But we did have some folks try to put that in video form, and so let's watch it together. Debbie Scobie. Well, it is an important time to be in community, as David shared with us. Three things about that community I'd like for us to think about this year. One is we need to be excellent in what we do. We're in a new category with new expectations competing with different institutions. Every ounce of this institution needs to be focused on doing excellent in what we do. We need to be courageous in where we stand. The world is calling for institutions like this and looking at institutions like this and wondering about institutions like this. There are plenty of issues and plenty of moments, plenty of opportunities for us to be courageous where we stand. And we need to be compassionate in how we give. I've been asked in recent days, you know, why don't you put a statement out about Charlottesville? Uh, why don't you say more things about things that are going on in the world? And every once in a while I will do that, including today I will put a statement out about Texas and the tragedy there and the beginning conversations we're having in terms of our response. 
But, but I remember that phrase that is so real that says simply, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I don't need to put out a statement to articulate the nature of this community. No, the teachers that graduated last year that are in the schools of Metro that are working in high poverty, high intense areas, changing the lives of young people. In fact, today they will be teaching 54,000 people around the state. They are our statement. Those that this year will go, this week will go to the Tennessee Prison for Women and they'll go through the bars and they'll go through the checks and they'll get in there and they'll spend literally hours Preparing students who in December, some of whom will get a bachelor's degree from this institution, they are our statement. The hundreds of students and faculty and staff who will go to 25 countries on 50 or 60 mission trips, they say something far more profound than I can ever write. Or in our community after the Imagine event with Magic Johnson, the forums that are going on, where we're going to parts of this community where Lipscomb has not been, and we're asking about how we can bring prosperity to those areas of our town, that's the message. Or the mayor that turns to us when racial strife is going on around the country and says, can we do it differently in Nashville and our Institute for Conflict Management and our School of Leadership, they go and they work with the mayor to carry on conversations you might not have ever heard about because they were constructive and collaborative. That's our statement. And when we educate you who are first generation students and give you opportunities for your lives you might not have ever expected and you leave this institution and you impact the world, ladies and gentlemen, that is our statement. We need to be the kind of community that while the president will occasionally say something and maybe that's helpful, the world notices the community because deep into its DNA and deep into its faith, they see something related to the cross that hangs above us and the example of servant leadership that touches the world. A Broadway musical broke out just a few months ago. A musical that has a difficult story, story of a young teenage boy, one that perhaps many of us can identify with, who is struggling in his high school community to find his spot and over and over again is communicated with in ways that are harsh, that are damaging, that are ego deflating, that are harmful. And the musical takes his difficult struggle, even with the suicide of one of his classmates, and tries to say that all of us long for a sense of community. All of us long for a place to be. And as we gather today, many of us come and life is in order, but many of us come and it is not. Or some of us come and it's in order today and a month from now or six, from, six months from now, it will not be. And so we long as we are in a crowd to be noticed. We long for someone to be encouraging. We long to have a sense of place and direction and to be part of a story. And this university for 127 years has invited students into the story of God. You don't have to accept it. You can reject it. Uh, you can struggle with it. That's okay. But you will leave here knowing that we offered it to you. And offered it to you not only for your college and high school years, but offered it to you for your life. And so out of this Broadway musical comes a song, and it has words that most of us could identify with, and it starts recognizing reality, but it ends with that confirmation, it ends with that affirmation that, in fact, we will find community, and community will find us. If you're lonely during the first couple of weeks of school, you're going to get over it. If you're not sure how to do it all, you're going to figure it out. Because you're going to have faculty and staff that surround you as we walk an important journey together. And so here are the words to that song, and I'll conclude with these. Even when the dark comes crashing through, when you need a friend to carry you, and when you're broken on the ground, you will be found. 
So let the sun come streaming in, because you'll reach up and you'll rise again. Lift your head, lift your head and look around. You will be found. You will be found. You will be found. You will be found. May God bless us as a community in our 127th year.
Let's give another round of applause to these students. Great job. These students are from the theater department, the School of Music, and the President's Ambassador Council. In Just Sang, You Will Be Found, from the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical, Dear Evan Hansen. The featured singers are Hattie King and Nicole Chung. <laughs> Hattie is a freshman musical theater major and graduate of Lipscomb Academy who was just named one of the top four female musical theater performers in the nation at the National High School Musical Theater Awards. Nicole is a freshman contemporary music major who comes to us from Jakarta, Indonesia. She had the distinct honor of being the opening act for Taylor Swift. Let's give these ladies a special round of applause. Thank you so much for blessing us today. To finish these proceedings, we'll ask that you all stand as we sing together, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Come on and shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before his throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Everybody ought to shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Unto the Lord. Come on and shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Unto the Lord. From the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth. To the depths of the sea. To the depths of the sea. Let all creation praise his name. From the ends of the earth. From the ends of the earth. To the depths of the sea, to the depths of the sea, let all creation praise His name. Shout hallelujah! Come on, y'all! Shout hallelujah! Come on and shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Come on and shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. All right, I'm going to ask you to just be seated for a few more minutes and then we'll be through. So in just a second, I'm going to lead us in a benediction. After that, we will have the tolling of the bell. It's a Lipscomb tradition to toll the bell once for each decade the school has been in existence. We are beginning our 127th year today, so we will toll the bell 12 times. Will you pray with me, please? Our most gracious God, at the beginning of this year, we are grateful for so many things. We give thanks for the many paths that, is, that have brought us here and for your love and protection that sustains us as a community of students, faculty, and staff, and friends. Father, we pray for our students this morning, the day. We pray that they become courageous enough to live their dreams and to make those dreams real. We pray that they are committed enough to change their world and confident enough to not look back 
because they know the God of all creation will use us all in a powerful way. We pray that injustice will trouble them, that hope will comfort them, that friends and family will support them. For all of us, Father, we pray we will all love to learn and learn to love the world we enter, confidence, seeking wisdom, learning more than before, and building a community stronger than the best we've experienced and enjoyed before we came to Lipscomb. We pray for Lipscomb, Father, for all who have gone before us, for all who will come after us, that we will increase the legacy we've been given and leave a legacy larger than we have received. Father, we boldly pray for this new beginning. May each day's work in the classroom, on the athletic field, in the residence hall, and offices, bless this community. We know you always accompany us, accompany us and will always be with us wherever we are, however we may feel, and whatever we will do. Today, Lord, bless all our work and our friendships. You created us for a purpose. You call us to continue and to complete your work. And we pray that we might carry out your work for which we were created and called. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. So, with the conclusion of this service and the ringing of the bell, I declare the opening of the 127th academic year at Lipscomb University. As the bells outside begin to toll the beginning of this new year, we ask all of you to please go and celebrate 127 years of Lipscomb. God bless you all.